welcome. Hello, everybody. So I'm Colleen Kruger. Um, this is episode four of our Sound Off Music Talks inspiration series. Um, Sound Off Talks is presented by Music Calgary, and we would like to acknowledge, acknowledge the projects funded in part of Factor, the Government of Canada and Canada's private broadcasters. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Music Calgary is located on Treaty 7 uh, region of Southern Alberta. Uh, today, we're talking with Hervé Colongo of Moonshine Records, uh, artist manager. Uh, yeah, we're very excited to talk with you, Hervé, but I would just take your audio, put your audio on, I think. You're on mute. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey. Yeah. It's it's um, it's feeding. Is it on my side or on your side? I oh, know it's good it's now. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. I, we're good. Yeah. Hi, Hervé. <laughs> hey. Um. So we'll just hand it over to you to do your introduction and tell us a bit about yourself and okay. what you do in music. All right, all right. So yeah, uh, I'm Hervé. I've been uh, working in music um, for like seven years. Um, I started as a manager. I manage uh, an artist called Pierre Quenders and I work with um, artists from different uh, repertoire from like hip hop to R&B. But yeah, uh, electronic music. And so yeah, I worked uh, uh, as a manager side of Dynalone Records and from there I also run uh, uh, I'm a co-founder of this collective called Moonshine um, which is uh, an African electronic uh, party collective that started in Montreal and we create event every Saturday after the full moon and yeah in random and secretive you know, places and you need to text the phone number to get the address and the whole, you know, secretive thing. So yeah, that's a collective. And we also have um, a record side of it where it's like a boutique label. We release uh, maybe four to five projects a year. And uh, also we run like a publishing side and yeah. So that's, you know, the, the stuff that I do. And it's pretty fun, even in COVID time, you know, keep myself busy with it. Nice. So nice. yeah, this is me 2020. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you're like multifaceted in sort of have every hat on at any given time. Exactly. You know, have to be uh, versatile. Totally. To survive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where are you based at the moment? Now I'm at uh, St. Adele. It's like one hour north of uh, Montreal. Okay. I'm, uh, uh, I'm on vacation, you know. Vacation. <laughs> work, 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 vacation. You know, oh, you work a bit, you, you vacation right. a bit. So it's pretty fun. No, oh, that's awesome. It's a yeah. nice way to balance it all. Yeah. Um. So this is our inspiration series. So we are trying more so to get the aha moment story of when people got started working in music. Mm -hmm. And what was the inspiration behind pursuing a career in music? So we'd like to know what your aha moment was. Okay, so my aha moment was probably like eight years ago. Uh, I was in university and I was studying marketing, actually. And, uh, um, you know, for, for classes, um, you know, teachers always ask you to like, do like a report on something that you like and trying to spin it like in a marketing way and do plans and everything so at the time my friend pierre uh was just like singing here and there so i was like oh, i'm gonna take your thing music thing that you're doing here um and trying to have like a marketing angle to it so that was like my aha moment it's kind of just like i was lazy i didn't want to start picking up my phone and calling these random people to do like some uh like marketing project for like their product for free so like i'm just gonna do it to my friend and see where that's gonna go and you know i didn't I really had good grades for for that particular class anyway but that kind of like was fun you know 
mm-hmm. uh, for me. And then from there, I just I kept on working with, with my friend, basically. So like, and, you know, asking a lot of questions around Google and, you know, watching like content, like documentaries and things like that, where I was more interested about like the behind the scene more than, you know, the, the other side of things, you, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and it was like around that that time, I think I was watching a lot of Entourage. That's like a TV show on HBO. And yeah, I just kind of like that dynamic. But obviously, uh, it didn't turn out to be like the same life as Entourage. But, you know, no. <laughs> yeah. I just I think somewhere that like thing contributed for me to have fun at, you know, being an entrepreneur in music and, you know, manage. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, definitely. And it's like doing some sort of live like for a course, if you take a project that you're already passionate about to like do the work. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. So you, you, need. you don't count the hours and, you know, um, I think that's what people appreciate and that's what people can actually get out of the project, the extra hours that you're putting or like the, the details. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And you're still working yeah. with Pierre. So that's eight still, years still, Yeah, I'm still working with Pierre, eight years strong, you know, two albums in, working yeah. on the third one. Nice. Uh, how did you and, two yeah. meet? How did you two originally meet? Uh, we were just in the same neighborhood when we all moved to Canada. You know, like uh, he was living in the same street as I am. And, you know, from there, just going to the same schools and, you know, ended up um, building a friendship. Um, and he's also Congolese and his mom used to make this like best African dish. And I was like, you know, wanted to stay a bit close to that. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're so like, that's how we became friends <laughs> yeah did your mom that's did nice. the fumboa can you like send me like a tupperware so nice. that was pretty much you know how like uh, our friendship started yeah so now you're more yeah. like family I'd say yeah yeah exactly yeah and then your inspiration around entourage I feel like you guys have an element of that <laughs> yeah you but roll, it's just you like the it... crew everywhere <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely. But I, I wouldn't say that the entourage was like specifically like a motivation, but just like having this conversation, it kind of like brought me back to like eight years ago, what I was doing, what I was watching and things. Mm-hmm. But uh, when it comes to like the collective part of things and uh, uh, how I actually started managing and the people that I, I, I like, I'm, I'm thinking more about like the hip hop people, you know, like the 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 Demon Dash and the the Master P and you know those type of executives that made uh, an underground movement something um, really um, like impactful for the world you, you know and in their own way with like their own experiences and being able to like navigate the waters with the with the corporation and the big sharks you know so those are like my inspiration and you know i'd like to read about them when i can and see and listen to their podcast and things like that you know yeah totally yeah Yeah, it's like anywhere people have done it so why reinvent the wheel yeah exactly take, take the parts that you're like most inspired by and like make it your own exactly you know a good way to go about it so when you when did you join Moonshine Collective? Well, I actually co-founded it. So I kind of okay, like yeah. yeah so um, seven years ago, so a year Whoa. after releasing Pierre's album, so uh, we uh, just like bam, bam. <laughs> yeah. So a year after the, uh, we released the album, we came to, uh, to what I don't know what's happened here. We came to okay. a realization that. Uh, um, no one cared about Pierre's music, <laughs> you know? So we're like, how can people care more about, uh, about this? So we thought that it would be interesting to have a context, you know? But around the same time, we're also listening to a lot of like um, Afro house and African electronic music that weren't really played in Montreal or where we were, were hanging out. And from there, we just like started playing that music and friends becoming DJs and sticking together became uh, Moonshine, you know? And uh, we also wanted to keep it super light. That's why we wanted to do it every Saturday after the full moon and not like every day, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that, it's uh, special if you just mm-hmm. do something of quality yeah. like very few times. 
it keeps mm-hmm. the quality for longer. Um, exactly. That's the only way I know how to explain that. But did it? Is it true that it started in your kitchen? Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so it seven is. Years it is. Ago, it is true. You had kitchen parties, and then kitchen they just, like, kept growing and growing, and then you had to move exactly. to warehouses. That landlord still doesn't like me, but oh, no. uh, it, 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 it was it was worth it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've been a, to one of those parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kitchen parties are always legendary. Totally, I like yeah. the idea that you move them around to it, like different locations every month, so it's never sort of a repeat every month. Yeah, that's something that uh, we really into we rather not repeat a venue but repeat the same programmation because we're not into like the what's the next big thing type mm-hmm. of conversation you know we're not really looking for the next big thing uh we're really trying to like create a chemistry between people mm-hmm. and that is what i guess we're trying to offer to like people coming on moonshine you know and since we kind of all adhd always going back to the same venue it's kind of like not interesting from you know for at least for me and mm-hmm. for for us so that was the idea behind it like switching location make it like always fun to like you know discover the city and mm-hmm. y- you know um and every room always have like a different vibe too so um which makes the experience always something i think memorable at mm-hmm. some point yeah totally. yeah you've, you can never go to the same party twice Exactly. So you went yeah. to like that particular event and you remember it. So you've done those every month for seven years? Yeah. Once a month for yeah. seven years. Exactly. And, well, you know, we start also traveling the, 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 the party we've done in Paris a couple of times um, in, in Santiago, in LA, in a um, bunch of places in Europe. And, you know, um, yeah, but for now we are chilling in Santa Del. Yeah, nice. <laughs> your 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 vacation, your vacation. Work, work, workation. <laughs> your you workation. Know? Yeah. Work-cation. No, yeah. It's good to like balance like vacation with work. I think that's yeah. like part of being in the industry is a bit of like work and pleasure always. <laughs> work yep. is work is pleasurable. I exactly. Think if you if you travel or do connect with people, that's yeah. definitely the part of it I love. That's why we're doing these because I don't have. A thousand and one conferences right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Having some video chats. Yeah, you've kept, you've come to Sound Off. You were here like three years ago. Three yeah, years two, ago. Uh, two, mm-hmm. three years ago. Um, met amazing artists. Um, uh, Jay Sterling. Mm-hmm. That's one that I'm following, and it's super cool. Um, I think uh, Cartel Madras, I think they're from there too. They, uh, I didn't yeah. discover them at the, the event you invited me, but, you know, I kept touch with some people there and, you know, um, yeah, when they, uh, there's some good music and things out there, I always try to pay attention because I know I'm going to have to come back. Yeah, you know? definitely. I know, Calgary, yeah. we're a hidden gem, people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's underrated. Yeah, underrated yeah. for, like, yeah. that stop town like stop over town definitely (laughs) well maybe it's better like that so you know i can fully enjoy it by myself keeps the mystery you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah you have to keep the mystery alive i I would say the hip-hop uh community here is very strong it's definitely like a lot of kids exploring that art and like they create their own things all the time Mm -hmm. it's great so hopefully they can take away from this (laughs) Um, hopefully uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. That's like, yeah, we need the next generation of music industry to mm-hmm. like come up. Um, leading into it, like our next question is, what advice would you give somebody looking to get into music right now? Uh, I would say basically just find the, the artist and the project that, pas- that you're passionate about and or that you have in- some you know strong interest that you know you won't be counting hours and you want to uh you know m- know more about it you know because there's a lot of self-taught things you know mm-hmm. and basically you just like finding solutions you know if you're up for that challenge for finding solution even if you really don't have no idea how to start well that's uh yeah you, you, you you're good for the job you know you're mm-hmm. welcome let's 
let's exchange numbers and have some drinks nice. and you know <laughs> plan some rollouts but yeah. that was the only advice i would give to someone you know yeah that's great advice it's like one step at a time and every yeah. step is unknown until you get to that point like exactly every, every problem that comes up yeah you just need to have a passion for solving problems and asking questions asking questions and you know have reminders on your google uh, yeah. suits and you know be organized <laughs> be organized be organized trying to be organized it's key yeah so yeah. did you through moon like creating moonshine did yeah. you find that like to be really beneficial in terms of growing pierre quander's like yeah definitely and just like his overall career yeah um the first thing was like creating a context for his music because you know he's playing and singing and, and mixing african languages and french and english and it's not something that is common um here in the music so we needed to create something like a how can when do i listen to pierre Crandes moment in a day you know so that was moonshine as well so yeah it definitely helped on that sense here and also just growing as an artist you know from moonshine also challenged him to become a dj you know and now is just it touches different aspect of being an artist that is just not a singer you know so he also dj and he curates so you know he's just growing as an artist so that also helped him and yeah that's like i see like a, that, that was like a good combination of things happening at the same time yeah totally yeah. like when one community can feed into other parts of yeah. like whatever projects you're working on i would say that's important mm -hmm. for like any artist it's like look at ways that you can sort of serve a community mm -hmm. even if it's like creating a fun party party night yeah. but if you're like creating that community it serves other things in your career in a way exactly it's a it's it's a fun party but you know yes there's the dj but then there's the security part of it there's the, the different creative there is um the staff at the bar and it's just not it becomes like yeah. a community you know yeah totally it, it benefits a bunch of people and also like the city as well yeah. you know and it gives you um, like access almost like an excuse to talk to people that you might not exactly. otherwise talk to and and then they're yeah you're just bringing them into the fold 100 percent mm -hmm. so in eight years where is moonshine grown to like um the music you know um, we are a label now so we want to keep doing more of that as well mm -hmm. uh you know it's cool to play other people music but also able to create it it's also important and you know, making sure to have like uh, younger people to have access to, you know, the, the structure and whatever that, you know, as a community of uh, Moonshine help build as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the fashion, we into fashion like crazy. We love the clothes. And I yeah, I we- I've said a thousand times that you're the be like some of the best dressed people in Canada. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> you know, like you and Pierre you. every day, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so cl clothing is like a thing and yeah instead of like uh we just thought that we had something to offer when it comes to clothing as well so uh working those are pretty much like what we've grown into and things that you know will you know put a lot of efforts to keep on like building you know and um, nice. um yeah making sure that artists from here and elsewhere that share the same passion as us for like African electronic music and percussive sound um, that we know each other that we exist and we can empower each other and uh, and create you know just like a platform for you know that scene mm -hmm. that is growing and that you know um, yeah that is su super yeah that is big yeah yeah most definitely are you yeah. like mostly working with at the moment Canadian artists or are you expanding? I have a bo yeah, I have both. Uh, I think it's a mix. Um, mm -hmm. We will be releasing a mixtape from a, a Congolese artist called uh, P2N. Like we've, you know, stumbled into his music on WhatsApp, basically, you know, so he was okay. really popular on WhatsApp yeah. and we were like, yo, this is actually super sick. So can we like 
put out your record and yeah we were releasing his record his first mixtape in october and then when we're doing mixtapes with every year moonshine releasing a, a mixtape and it's mostly uh international artists as well so i think it's a mix okay sweet yeah yeah, yeah. i i think my takeaway from your career is that it's like you've grown it organically yeah like you've done it when every that like step one foot in front of the other kind of process where everything leads to something else but you mm -hmm. probably didn't imagine you would be where you're at right now eight years ago absolutely not no you're like doing mm, I, a marketing course and you're like in the future <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely didn't uh, envision this but yeah. you know um you know i'm willing to take the you know the challenge and make it something even bigger you know that can benefits way more people and uh and creative you know yeah no awesome yeah. that's all awesome so, yeah i think that's a wrap <laughs> oh that was cute that was fun yeah. let's yeah. do it again sure. anytime <laughs> yeah. you know? i still need a moonshine shirt by the way <laughs> guess what we are putting out like a new collection Amazing. next week okay Okay. I'll send you something and <laughs> if you can just take a photo of you the shirt at 10 foot Henry. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. That's 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 it. My favorite <laughs> restaurant so that you know I can feel like I'm in Calgary again. Yeah. We'll bring you back. I hope to see you in Calgary again soon. Um looking forward to come back to Calgary. Really fun town. Totally. Show yeah. us Jay. You said you're with Jay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jay is in a jacuzzi. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is it's getting <laughs> we're it's going getting serious. <laughs> wow, that just looks tropical where you are. Right now. Yeah, even though it's like northern Quebec. Um. <laughs> well, he came out of the jacuzzi. Oh uh, no. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, I'll have to say hi to him another day. Yeah. I oh, know he's there. He's still there. Sorry. F okay. False alarm. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jay, I have some friends uh, I'm on a call with. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be waving. Right. Hi, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? That's Colleen. Hi. <laughs> Colleen from Calgary Music. Uh... Oh. oh, hi. <laughs> What's going on, girl? <laughs> You look like you're really enjoying this this vacation. Looks this is the scary. vacation vibe, you know. You, guys are, you know how to vacation. See, you're living the entourage <laughs> life. <laughs> reality. <laughs> yeah, that's reality. It's reality. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it was really nice to catch up with you, and thank you for sharing your aha moment story. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. Talk to you yeah. soon. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. bye.